Hey everyone, so I'm pretty excited to show this uh, video here to you guys. It's my workflow on using the Midas M32 along with Pro Tools. Now I'm gonna get started right away and then I'm gonna go through the details on how I have everything uh, going. And if I have left anything out or if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, leave a comment in the section below. If you think this is a pretty good video, give me a thumbs up. Um, and if you don't, if you think it sucks, do the thumbs down. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start playing the session here. And the way that I have everything is routed to individual channels. So let's go. So you can see I got my kick here on channel one, snare on channel two. I went to bass on channel four here. I've got pianos on uh, channels nine and 10. That's a stereo link track here. All right, let's see what else I got going here. I got some percussion over here. And I got some effects over here. Then I've got my stop function over here for Pro Tools. Got my play. I've got my scrub here. Stop. Uh, let's see if I wanted to control Pro Tools. I just go ahead and hit the remote function. Now I'm controlling individual channels within Pro Tools. Let's go to the mix window up there. All right, we're at the mix window here. And if you can see, I'm controlling the DAW with my faders here. I can bank up and down to my next section here, right? Go back out, go back to my edit window. This is usually how I mix. Now, I picked this little tip up from uh, Pensado, Dave Pensado here. Basically, he has all his tracks routed out into a submaster group, and then from the submaster group onto a print track, which is my print track is right here. So the interesting part about this is that I actually have my print track on the Midas console here on channels 31, 32. So every single channel out of my Midas from Pro Tools is going back into channels 31, 32 after my Submaster here. So I can actually add effects to my master track and then to my print track. I'm gonna go ahead and print right here. All right, so let's go ahead and bring my, actually, it's going to print right into here. So you can see that it's printing, right? And then when I want to play back just my print track, I take it off of monitoring input. And this right here is being played out while channels 31 and 32, that's my playback. And I'm gonna go ahead and mess with the EQ. I think the light's a little too bright there. But for instance, we can turn on EQ here, right? And use our processing from the Midas board as well too, if you wanted to, you know? Right? We can use all our dynamics within the channels. We can use our master dynamics from the master channel being printed on to Pro Tools. The nice thing about it is that before it goes to my print track, I have it running through a limiter. So it's never gonna overload my master track. I can push it as hard as I want, but it's not gonna clip. Now if you look at my print track there, 
it's not going to clip. And I can squash the heck out of it and really give, excuse me, and really give it some more. Let's get rid of this EQ here. It's making it sound funny. Now obviously it sounds like crap, but you get the idea here. It's not going to overload my track. I've got a limiter on it. So the last thing before it goes into the print, just as like you were using outboard gear. I've got my two track version, which goes out to the client or to the mastering house or to uh, the printing house ready for print. And it's again, it's channels 31 and 32 is what I have it assigned to. So that's it. I mean, this is it right here. So when I'm playing it back, this is my two track. A new Pro Tool session. So I have my template set up here. And so the way that I have my template set up is I've got just regular mono channels, right? Oops, okay. So my first bank, one through 16, is regular. So anything coming out of Pro Tools, one through 16, I can just route through here. What I did with the DCAs now, if you can see in the DCAs, I've got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's corresponding to my second banks, channel 17 through 30. So I actually have these paired up in stereo. So the DCAs are gonna control these. I never have to worry about going to the next bank in order to mix because I can mix using this. So if I have a stereo track coming out of Pro Tools, I'll just assign it easily to any one of these here, right? And if I need more than that, you know, I can assign stereo channels to these here. Think of these as my subgroups. So anything I want to put into a subgroup channel, I do here. Individual tracks, I do here, uh, for the most part. Uh, and then obviously channels 31 and 32, I leave blank for my two track. This is my playback here from Pro Tools after I print out, right? And then I've got my remote control in order to control Pro Tools. All these channels being routed to bus 9 and 10. So it's coming out of the Midas, all the channels, from channels 1 all the way up until 30. It's all coming out of the Midas, out of bus 9 and 10. And then I'm bringing it back, if you look at my I.O., back into 19 and 20. So my subgroup is coming out of 19 and 20, and then it's being routed back into my print track. So here, you'll look at this subgroup out here. Where is it here? All of them are coming into the subgroup, which is channel 19 and 20 going through my processing, all the way up into my lim limiter, and then to my playback. And that's pretty much it. 